when you think about the Arawak cement plant, what's the first thing that comes to mind? I'm guessing something along the lines of, oh, that place up north where the surfers say the waves are great. Or geez, that's a long drive to work if you live further than the south coast. And yes, we will admit we are slightly off the beaten path. But you'll be surprised at how important the work we do here is and why it is equally important that we maintain our pristine reputation as a safe, environmentally compliant and fair working environment. Before you start work as a contractor or an entity working on or behalf or a visitor to the plant, you must attend an orientation session. We aim to ensure that we have zero accidents, zero incidents, and therefore zero injuries on our plant. The TCL Group and Arawak Seamen Company Limited have a series of health, safety, and environmental requirements that are mandatory for all visitors, contractors, and employees. So please give us your undivided attention. The Arawak Seamen Company Limited is an ISO 14001 certified company maintaining an environmental management system that guides our policies for establishing environmental objectives and targets. In addition, we know that our operations, products, and services have the potential to impact the environment. So Arawak's environmental policy is to ensure complete compliance with all legal and other requirements to manage those potential risks so that negative impacts do not occur at all. In fact, our goal is not only to promote a healthy environment, but also to consistently improve our environmental performance. Now, we can't expect you to adhere to safety rules if we don't make clear what you need to be safe from, can we? So now we will explain our safety rules and other information regarding security access. There are mandatory personal protective equipment that must be worn when entering the operation section of our plant. These are safety boots, safety helmets, safety glasses, and visibility clothing. These are all mandatory at a minimum. In addition, lockout locks, dust mask, air plugs, and gloves must be carried by all persons who will be working on the plant. Because we care so much about your safety and ensuring we have zero injuries, you will actually be denied access to the plant areas if you are not outfitted with the required safety gear. I'm sure you would imagine there are other tasks which need more than basic safety gear. Tasks like cutting, grinding, or welding require additional eye and air protection. There are also several areas on the plant designated for hearing protection and air plugs must be worn in these areas. If you are working above four feet without protective railings, you need to be wearing full body harness and a lanyard. When you consider the work we do here, both our staff personnel and those contracted to work on our behalf, your attire and the company's dress code also impacts on the safe working environment. Therefore, if you're working on the plant, you cannot wear rings, chains, bracelets, or any loose hanging clothing around the equipment. These items can become caught in equipment and result in injury to persons wearing them. Also, short pants and sleeveless clothing are not allowed on the plant. These rules and guidelines were developed to ensure your safety at our plant. Hindsight is a wonderful thing, but foresight is better especially when it comes to saving a life or pain. The next point may seem obvious, but when complacency sets in, there is a tendency to say to yourself, I've done this before many times. But the fact is, on an industrial plant like ours, an one unguarded moment can lead to catastrophic and far-reaching consequences. As such, there will be no horseplay or fooling around while at the plant. This includes illegal activities that could endanger the safety of yourself or others. If you are caught doing it, you will be asked to leave the site with dispatch. Zero tolerance is an old cliche, but it's relevant all the same. And speaking of illegal activities, we are not the morality police, but we are very clear about what is and is not allowed on the plant. And they are the following, firearms, weapons or controlled substances. 
And in case that phrase is a gray area for you, let's fill it in with some specifics. We're talking about machetes, tasers, pepper spray, pen knives, and other blades. And on the more serious side, all illegal drugs and alcoholic beverages or other intoxicants are prohibited on our plan. So, staying on the topic of safety, safety data sheets are required for all materials used on the plan, a quick check of the store's department, and you should be able to peruse one at your leisure. There is no discussion around safety and managing hazards that does not somehow include fire. And the Arawak cement plant is no different. We have a variety of fuels on the plant to use in our manufacturing process and our power station. So fuel is present throughout the plant. With the ever-present oxygen in the air, one spark will complete the fire triangle and result in a fire. Smoking is therefore not allowed in the plant except in designated smoking areas located at the front of our locker room and on the lawn next to our administration building. All persons on the compound must adhere to these rules. By now you must realize that the safety of our employees, contractors, and visitors, and being environmentally responsible are our key goals at the Arawak Cement Plant. So naturally this extends to tools and equipment. It is the contractor's responsibility to make sure that the tools, vehicles, machinery, and equipment for the job are in good working order and is fit for the specific purpose. For contractors who require special orientation training, once the area that you will be working on is identified, safety training specific to that area will be done. This training includes, but is not limited to, ladder safety, confined space, including respiratory protection, electrical safety, hearing protection, kiln refractory, welding safety, hot work permit system, fall protection, lotto program. There is a popular phrase these days that goes, stay in your lane, there's no traffic there. And that's kind of what we would like from you. If you've been contracted to work in a defined area or areas, please take note of the safety equipment like pull cords, e-stops, and fire extinguishers. These are there to be used for emergencies only. Now for the paperwork. All jobs require a completed work permit, and a job safety analysis signed by all individuals performing the job. The Arawak employee who is in charge of the job will be responsible for ensuring that work permit and job safety analysis are completed. Work permits and job safety analysis shall be completed for all jobs and will be submitted to the central control room for sign-off. A copy of the work permit will be kept on the job site at all times as a means of verification of authorization to execute the task. Work permits shall be renewed as required until the completion of the job. Signing off as having completed the job is an indication that the equipment is available for safe operation. Arawak Cement is a large plant with many simultaneously moving equipment. To start with the obvious, Stay clear of all moving machinery. All of our equipment can be started from remote locations where a task involves work to be done on a piece of energized equipment, whether electric, pneumatic, or hydraulic. The contractor must liaise with the Arawak contact to ensure isolation and lock out of the equipment prior to the start of the task. The equipment must be shut off de-energized, appropriately locked and tagged off. This is done in conjunction with the work permit and the job safety analysis. At Arawak, we use large mobile equipment like loaders and excavators. To ensure your safety, maintain a safe distance because the operator's visibility may be limited. Before you even think about entering an area where large equipment is working, you must make the operator aware of your presence. Noise, limited visibility, and blind spots mean that your presence may not be obvious. Going back to the admonishment to stay in your lane, this also adheres to electrical work. If you are not an electrician hired by the Arawak Cement Company Limited, you are not to perform electrical work or enter electrical enclosures, period. 
Traffic control, a plant of this size with various activities and many pedestrians, has established a strict speed limit of 25 kilometers per hour, to which all drivers and operators of vehicles and mobile equipment must adhere. Drivers exceeding the speed limit will be asked to leave the premises immediately. The plant itself generates some hazards during the process of cement manufacturing, which we want you to be aware of. Clinker is a product of the cement manufacturing process, which can sometimes be found on the road and pathways in some areas of the plant. Clinker on the ground can be a trip hazard, and everyone should avoid walking on clinker that's on the ground. This material is usually cleaned up or the area blocked off. Another hazard created by the process of cement manufacturing is the production of raw meal which when wet can prove to be very slippery, resulting in a trip hazard. Once identified, please do not walk on patches of wet material. Signage at Arawak cement plant is very important. Red danger tape means do not enter. Entering will result in someone getting hurt. Yellow tape with caution written in black means that only persons who are authorized may enter carefully. Some areas are blocked with cones or signs. Only authorized persons may enter these areas. All signs on the plant must be adhered to without exception. And speaking of signs, the first one you will see upon your approach to the plant says, stop and check with security. All vehicles entering or leaving the compound should report to the security officer on duty and may be subjected to search. So too with parking. There are designated areas for parking and all vehicles should be parked facing outwards. Accidents, despite our best efforts, may sometimes happen, but we have a clear system in place to tackle them should the need arise. All accidents, near misses or incidents must be reported to the Arawak representatives immediately. This extends to all environmental incidents, including spills and damage to utilities. We look after our contracted personnel and on-site staff at the plant, which is why there is an industrial nurse on-site during the daytime. Emergencies. In the event of an emergency, the contractor and his employees should follow the directions of the Arawak representative. Should evacuation of the site be required, the siren will be sounded for three minutes. On hearing the siren, the contractor and his employees should assemble at the closest designated assembly point and follow the instructions given by the wardens at the point. Area 1 is for persons in the admin building located to the east of the administration building. Area 2 is for persons in the plant located in front of the locker room, close to the entrance gate. Area 3 for persons on the jetty and surrounding areas is located on the path to the sea. Until a head count is performed by the contractor, and all personnel present and accounted for, everyone should remain in the designated area until the all clear is given. Please note, the siren is tested at 10 a.m. on Monday mornings. This is a very short pulse of the alarm. At Arawak, our safety logo is zero for life. Zero accidents, zero injuries, zero incidents. Because we value life.